This is Brand USA Talks Travel, a new five minute podcast to elevate the conversation concerning international travel to the United States. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. Did you really graduate from Beach High School? I really graduated from Beach High School. Ah, uh, no wonder you decided to go into the travel industry. Elliot Ferguson is president and CEO of Destination DC. He's also a Brand USA and US travel board member. I'm not sure when he sleeps. Elliot, it's truly a pleasure to finally meet you in person. Thanks for joining me. The pleasure is all mine. Good to be here. I have so much to ask you, but let's start with an area that you've been specializing in for decades, mice, meetings, incentives, conferences, and exhibitions. From an international perspective, what do destinations need to know to do mice well? The first thing is to recognize that the process from selling to servicing mice meetings is so different than the domestic market. You know, the key thing with the domestic market is really infrastructure, dates, rates, space, and of course, the destination. But with the mice market, there is a need to have a decent understanding of what they're trying to accomplish during their meeting, building a strong relationship with those that are in the planning process, because it may not necessarily be the person that works for the association, and to recognize the economic impact. From our perspective here in Washington, D.C., we love our domestic meetings, but the international meetings, just like the international leisure traveler, stays longer and spends more. The meetings are smaller, but extremely important to us. Beyond D.C., how should cities, even smaller destinations, think about mice during recovery? The mice market is really interested in what the federal government is doing to make sure that their attendees are safe when they're coming to the U.S., Above and beyond that, the international meetings market is so accustomed to a country hosting their meeting that when they come to the U.S., it's a little different because, of course, we have 50 states, District of Columbia, and territories. So their expectation might be skewed simply because the prime minister of a country might have come to their conference to welcome them if they were in Belgium. That's not going to happen in the United States. Deal with their expectations and make sure that you focus on ways to get them to understand how they can maximize their meetings when they're here. We're seeing glimmers of good news for inbound leisure travel. What are you seeing in terms of business travel? Especially for a city like Washington, D.C., where business travel is tied to that trip to on Capitol Hill, the fact that that's not happening means that those business meetings aren't taking place in a city like Washington. So for us, it's important that Congress allows in-person meetings before we see the return of business travel. What all the indicators are telling us is that the demand is there for business travel to get back on track. They just need to get the okay to actually get out there and travel again. Post-pandemic, do you expect any permanent changes to affect mice bookings or actual execution? The hybrid concept that most domestic associations are grappling with will play a larger role with mice meetings. All indicators tell us that in-person meetings will not go away person-to-person opportunity is still extremely important in the meetings market. And so we feel like that will still be the case. But the hybrid approach, that remains to be seen because we haven't had any international meetings in the United States for the most part. And we'll wait and see exactly how that will play a role as we look at future meetings. You've been working in MICE for, what, 30 years now? Not that long. Honestly, as a destination, we've been in the MICE market for about 15 years. I've been in the industry for over 30 years, but that's the reality with most of the larger destinations or some of the smaller ones as well, is that we just have not invested the time and the energy. And let me just tell you, there is an investment associated with the MICE meetings that a city has to really focus on if they really want to be successful in bringing these meetings to their destination. For Washington, we've been in the game for about 15 years, and we started realizing a larger return on investment in the last eight or nine years. What's kept you interested in working in MICE for so long? The fact that Washington is an international destination, that there are a lot of opportunities here simply because of not only the federal experience for those meetings coming to the city, but also from all of the associations and nonprofits in our own backyard. We're a great backyard for those meetings. The reality for us is that the smaller meetings tend to lead to larger opportunities for larger congresses, which is what everybody wants. Elliot, since you're both on Brand USA's board and run a DMO, you're in a unique position to answer this next question, which is a toughie. In a post-COVID world, what do you think is the best way for DMOs to work with Brand USA? 
the key thing for us is to really focus on how we've positioned ourselves before the pandemic in major destinations. In Washington, we had representation in about five different countries. Now there's an opportunity for us to really focus on what we want to do in equally as much what we want to do different in a endemic environment versus a pandemic environment. With Brand USA, the question is, what role have they played in those uh, secondary markets and what roles perhaps DMOs like ours would want them to play as we look at moving forward? Thanks to Elliot Ferguson for being our special guest today. Before we go, I'd like to remind our listeners that Brand USA's Global Marketplace website has opened an international pavilion. It has research, facts, and contacts concerning markets you may be considering. Contact your Brand USA rep to learn more. We hope you'll subscribe to this new podcast, and when you do, you'll get a notification each time a new episode is released. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, email us at podcast at thebrandusa.com or call 202-793-6256. Our producer is Asher Mirovich, who also writes and performs all music and sound. Engineering by Brian Watkins. Be sure and let your friends in the travel industry know about this podcast.